I think we're going to, we should get started. We've got uh, quite a few folks on already. So welcome to the Friday Fam. We are delighted today to have Norma Dabrowski from Ocean City, Maryland. Um, welcome. I'm Dave Bodo with Leisure Group Travel, and we are excited to bring these new in-depth Friday fans uh, to you. They've been a very important part of our multimedia virtual site inspection program. Along with the online version and the print site inspection, the Friday fans, which will be recorded, has been a great way for destinations to share their story with group travel planners. Today, we'll begin with an interview session between Norma and Jeff Gaydock. Jeff is Premier Travel Media's publisher. They'll be sharing all that's amazing in Ocean City and the surrounding eastern shore of Maryland. At the conclusion of the session, we'll go to a QA um, with Norma. Uh, you can enter your questions in the chat room. I'll relay your questions to Norma so we're not talking over each other. So please make sure you're muted and your video is off. Jeff, let's get it started. Hi, everybody. Jeff Gata here from Leisure Group Travel, and I'm excited to be with you guys again today on another Friday fam. With me is Norma Dubowski from Ocean City, Maryland. How are you doing today, Norma? I'm great, Jeff. It's so nice to see you. We've not seen each other in a while, and this is truly a treat. Yeah, abs absolutely. And that's actually, I think, a great segue to today's event. You and I have known each other for quite a long period of time, uh, but the context upon which we know each other is the trade show circuit. Uh, so um, I, I've been doing these Friday fams now uh, for a period of time, and some of these destinations I've been to before, I've had the chance to experience firsthand. Yours is not one. So I'm very excited, I, hopefully as excited as our audience is today, is to learn what the vibe is in Ocean City. Um, I don't think there's anybody better to explain that to our audience than you with your experience there. And I think you are uh, kind of grew up in the area. So really looking forward to spending some time with you today. Well, thank you. I did grow up in this area. I grew up just two counties over and I've worked, had the pleasure of working for the town of Ocean Cities Tourism for 24 years now. Nice. And you're the destination sales marketing and CVV manager there? Yes. So that's group tour, which we're how we know each other so well. Uh, I manage the membership for the CVB and do a lot of the programs, do a lot of the web update. Um, and lately have even been, um, put in the position of uh, dabbling in the meeting and convention realm as well. So um, happy for that because new things are always exciting to delve into. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get going on with the presentation portion of our show today. Okay. Uh, beautiful background here. Tell me about what we're looking at. That is actually the bay side of Ocean City. Um, our north side park is a wonderful facility. It's got many acres of jogging paths, recreation facilities, uh, eating pavilions. It's a venue even that family reunions can hold picnics and so forth um, by prior arrangement. And the lagoon goes out into uh, one of the bays that, that follows in back. Ocean City is very narrow. It's 10 miles long, but very narrow in width. And you can either be on the ocean or the bay side within four blocks of each other at most points. Very stunning view. Uh, this would be sunrise, I'm taking it? or No, this is actually else? sunset. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice, nice. So, you know, I, like many ocean uh, towns, I, you know, that Ocean City is famous for its boardwalk. So let's talk a little bit um, about that as we go through. But I think for people that aren't familiar with the area in general, let's talk about your location in general. Um, major uh, gateway cities, where do you find guests coming from? Well, our very best market is always not only our home state of Maryland, but we have so many wonderful visitors from Pennsylvania. We, we say that's our favorite state because we get so many. Um, we are on the most furthest east as you can get. Um, for those that are familiar with Route 50 that go around the Baltimore, Washington area, Route 50 actually goes all the way across the country. It begins in Ocean City and ends in California. And I always say it starts here or conversely, you could travel from California and go the entirety of the country on Route 50 and end up 
coming over our bridge, looking right at the Atlantic Ocean as you come over the bridge. So we are about, uh, we're on the, what people call the Delmarva, which is Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, this peninsula that goes out between the Atlantic Ocean and the Chesapeake Bay, which is the largest estuary in the United States. The bay is uh, teeming with wildlife and it, it's a very famous body of water. And we're always on that East Coast. We're Maryland's only beach resort. We are about two and a half hours from Baltimore and Washington and about the same from Philadelphia and about three hours from the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area and about three hours from Atlantic City. So we are within a good deal of the population of the Eastern United States and pretty close. We're considered a drive to destination. Folks that need to uh, use air travel can use the Salisbury Airport. It's serviced by Americans, so you can go anywhere from there. Uh, but most people enjoy just getting in the car and coming down here or on a motor coach, of course, for our groups. Nice, nice. Well, it's uh, being surrounded by water certainly has its advantages, and you can see there on the screen, um, there's no shortage of it around Ocean City. Um, so I, I mentioned the boardwalk at the very beginning. Uh, that's a staple of what you guys offer. Talk about the vibe, uh, what people see and do there. What's maybe some of your favorite activities? Well, it's a three-mile span of boardwalk. We've got a 10-mile beach, three miles of that. From the southernmost end is the boardwalk. It goes to the north to 27th Street. Along that stretch, there are hotels, um, places to walk up and get cotton candy, fudge, ice cream. You play the old fashioned arcade games. Um, at the southernmost end, our life saving station museum, uh, Trimper's Rides, which has been here for generations. There's a, a 1902 a carousel inside their indoor rides. Um, many of us remember riding their little boats inside, the little rides that they have for their amusements. And outside, they their generations have come through spanning and have the most modern rides on the outside. And you can often find the latest, greatest uh, that you would find in any amusement park. But it has that feel of, you know, you just walk up. You don't, you don't, you're not in a parking lot 20 miles away from walking up to this amusement park. You are right there on the boardwalk, walking right up, getting your ticket. And I think that's something unique these days. Uh, you can get any manner of food, uh, all kinds of games, shops. There's a pier that goes out into the Atlantic where there are more rides and games as well as a fishing pier. There's haunted house. There's uh, just anything you can imagine. People love to see the kites from the kite loft store out there on the beach. Folks take their beach wear and go out and enjoy the beach. It's very uh, popular to be on the boardwalk in the evening, of course, to people watch and see all the people walk by. It's, it's very crowded in the evenings in the summer. In the mornings, people enjoy a bike ride. They enjoy spending time just walking and getting exercise and just taking the Atlantic in. You're right there at the Atlantic Ocean when you're on our boardwalk. Well, it looks like you've got a pretty expansive beachfront there as well. You know, some boardwalks, you know, hug the beach, but at least uh -huh. from the view we have here, you've got some pretty expansive uh, beachfront. Um, is there hotel development on the boardwalk or is that more of a retail dining um, scene? The southernmost end is more of, of retail dining and the arcades, but there are hotels that start as early as First Street and Second Street, and that would be the, the southern end. So there are many hotels that take this stand. So a lot of folks like to stay right on the boardwalk because they'll never move their car or their motor coach the entire time they're here because they can be right in the center of everything and be right on the boardwalk and on the beach. Of course, we have many, many hotels all around town, both Bayside and Oceanside that are comfortable and a budget to fit anyone really. Absolutely. So uh, moving away from the boardwalk, uh, let's talk about the arts in history scene in the Ocean City, as well as the, the surrounding area. What sort of things can groups experience when they come there? Well, the Art League of Ocean City is is not only been very active through the years, but they have certainly come even more to the front lately. They're they're even having an international film festival here soon, uh, which this year will be virtually, but they have done it in the, on the red carpet and everything, and it's becoming quite popular. Uh, 
their director, Rena Thaler, is very much a believer that arts are very much a part of tourism and a visitor experience for any group and any age. They do a lot of community programs, but we also encourage visitors to see their facility. Um, they have meeting venue space or event space as well, and they, they have artwork in our convention center, which is where my office is and our visitor center is located. So they're very much a presence here. And you'll find anything from uh, artwork and pottery that you would find almost at any location to great pictures and drawings of our local ponies and scenes from the beach and so forth. Um, and history, as you've mentioned, is nearby us, not only in Worcester County where we are, there's a facility called Radcliffe House, which is near us. It's near the Assateague National State Park and, and National Park as well. That was, that was a merchant um, house and you can, they have docents there and it's a great place to soak in a little history as well as beach life. Okay. And, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, I, I know that right on the boardwalk, uh, there's the uh, Ocean City Life Saving Station Museum. Yes, and that is a town facility. Um, it, we're very proud of it. It's actually the beginnings of the, 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 um, the lifeguards that would be out on the beach and, and also for the Coast Guard that goes out to save ships. Uh, mm -hmm. It tells you about how their early surfmen, as they called them, would, would know of a ship that was wrecking off the Atlantic and they would go out with all manner of ropes and things like that, which would seem archaic to us now for rescuing, <laughs> but they were able to rescue folks off ships when there would be a storm right here off the Atlantic. You see a replica of a boat that they had, the equipment, and there's something for everyone in that uh, museum because they often have displays of um, early beach where the surfing community has displays. Ocean City is unique that it was sort of founded by ladies. Um, ladies would take in boarders to make money while their husbands were out as being fishermen. And it turned hmm. into what was called the ladies resort. Um, a few years ago, there was a program called the Steel Magnolias of Ocean City. And these were the ladies that actually started the hotels. But starting as a boarding house is now something that the families like the Harrison family would have, which is, you know, the huge Hilton, the double tree. This is what it's turned into here. So everyone's proud of that history. And it has the best view of everything. It's right at the south end of the boardwalk. You have a wonderful view of the inlet that was cut in the 30s by a, a, a hurricane. And that's how we sort of got formated into the geograph geographical formulation that Ocean City is now because right across from that inlet is where the acetate ponies roam. There's a great view of it from the inlet. Can you talk a little bit, you're, you're mentioning history in the area, the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Park? Yes, because it, it's one of my favorite things. And uh, though it is about an hour outside of Ocean City, we certainly have been um, boosting that for, for groups, anyone who's interested in history or culture uh, or even the environment, it's just a wonderful treat. It's a few miles outside of Cambridge. It's all you do is go a little off Route 50 and you can make a loop of that on your way to Ocean City. Um, Harriet Tubman, of course, is a really well-known name now. There's been so much publicity in the last few years about her leading folks to free, freedom out of enslavement. Well, she was a native of Dorchester County where I'm from, grew up in the marshy areas where I'm from in Dorchester County. And the first time I saw that facility uh, where the state hosted a, an informal open house for those of us in the hospitality industry, I was just in awe. I couldn't believe a facility like that was had come up literally out of the marsh in that area. Everything in that facility is so thought out from the windows that face north indicating that this is the way to freedom to the textures that they've used in the building. Everything is symbolic of her struggle to get her family and anyone that she could help to freedom. She was born there, she lived her early life there and returned to that area to help uh, slaves get to the North. And um, the facility is just wonderful. It, it can be a teaching facility, there's resources there for study. It's located in a 
convenient area. There's a bus loop there. It's easy access. There's a pavilion there for families or groups that would want to do a meal there. It's also adjacent to the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which has the most pairs of eagles that nest throughout the year. And it's been called the Everglades of the North. So pairing a trip or a side trip, if you will, to those two facilities that are right next to each other, it's just an, I feel it's a very enriching experience. And we know lifetime learning in many forms now is, is the way most of us would like to think. And it's just a, it's a solemn experience, but it's a very enriching experience as well. Yeah, it definitely seems like a must visit. Uh, one of the um, items that I came across in doing research for this conversation uh, was the Ward Museum of Wildfowl, uh, Wildfowl Art, excuse me. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and what uh, is available there? Yes, um, again, a wonderful facility, actually an international facility. It's, it's located in Salisbury, which is just about 40 minutes away from Ocean City. They're our good partner and that they host an international wildlife carving competition and it's been held in the convention center here in Ocean City for many, many decades. They get visitors from all over and artists from all over the world who come in. The Ward brothers, whom it's named after, were in Crisfield, Maryland, which is in Somerset County, just south of here. And they uh, just had like a barber shop and a little store and they'd sit around doing decoys. Well, at some point, some hunters from someplace else, I guess, discovered what a what a wonderful talent these gentlemen had, and it became the standard for decoy carving. Hmm. It, it's one of the few American folk art, original folk arts in the country. And the mecca of that is that is that the Ward Foundation and the Ward Museum in Salisbury, they have wonderful artwork. They are affiliated with Salisbury University, and it is a, a top-notch first-class facility and a real treat to go through. Awesome. Yeah, that seems like another must-do event in the area. Um, you certainly no shortage of you know, art and history there. Anything else that we missed? Well, there's uh, actually one of the things that's that's uh, quite a treat for people here. Uh, there is a artist who actually does sand sculptures on the beach in Ocean City, uh, in front of the Plim Plaza Hotel on Second Street. And in the summer, if you're lucky, you catch him. His name is Randy Hoffman, and he does religious and other sculptures in the sand, and they are, they're immense. They're huge, and it, it's quite a thing to watch him carve that sand in the summer. So folks that are down here and happen to catch him in the summer out there uh, making those sculptures, that's, that's something that is very unique, I think, and that certainly yeah. is full on art. Yeah, I love that. Uh, just as super, anybody who can actually dream up um, that and, and you know make it into um, something, it just uh, quite fascinating. So very cool. Um, and that's uh, on, on a regular basis, daily basis. Pretty much, yes. It, it's it's difficult in the summer to go out there and not see either him working or see what his latest uh, accomplishment is. Gotcha, gotcha, cool. Okay, um, so great, great uh, arts and culture scene in the area and surrounding counties. Um, you guys are, you know, jam packed. That's a nice little um, yin yang between the beach activities and uh, the arts and history. Um, but I know, you know, from from the outdoor, your activities aren't just limited to the beach. What other type of things do you guys have available? Um, you know, more and more these days, of course, people are looking to get outdoors and explore. So maybe walk through a few of the different options in the area. They are, um, it, naturally we have the water sports, uh, the jet skis, uh, the um, the parasailing, all of that type, you know, you can rent boats here, uh, but also people are into sort of the soft uh, water sports, uh, the paddle boards that you stand up and paddle, kayaking, and there's certainly a lot of coastal bay waterways in and around Ocean City where you can partake of that. One of our favorite places is Ayers Creek, which wonderful couple that runs that. They've been there for years, very reliable. Um, they can take, what's really nice is they're able to even take folks that are disabled. They have a level of all type and all manner of, of soft water experiences. And they'll come to you as well. And they've got a wonderful facility right on the uh, Ayers Creek, as it says. Um, just a beautiful scenic place on the way out to Assateague Island. So there's something for everyone in that area as well. A lot of 
sports, uh, the Pocomoke River and state area in Worcester County. Again, a wonderful Mecca for all types of soft experience so that anyone can see that. Uh, the Delmarva Discovery Center in Pocomoke, while it is a museum, is still a great place. It's right on the banks of the Pocomoke River, which is uniquely considered a pristine waterway, which is not something environmentalists say lightly these days. And it's just a great place to see the, the real history and culture of rural Eastern Shore life. The steamboats that used to traverse to take passengers and supply goods to the small towns. They have a replica of a steamboat. They have an otter pair that put on a little show every day and you can stand there and watch. Um, they have a Native American display and it's really a nice spot for groups to go. A lot of times, in fact, if we have a motor coach in the area and there's a rare case of rain in Ocean City, it's a good place to make an alternative plan. If you hadn't planned to go there, you might be able to arrange that to get in because it is well worth it. It's such a quaint place and, and really unique. Cool, cool. C can you talk a little bit about the, I, I, and make sure I'm pronouncing this correctly, Assateague Island National Seashore? It, it is, it, you're very close, it's Assateague. Just oh, like well, I, I, I didn't Assateague. want to say a bad word, Norma. So. I know, but that's that, that's how you say it, it's Assateague, and that, that is a Native American word, as you can imagine, from you can see from the spelling of it. Um, and Assateague National and State Seashore is a wonderful place. It's full of marsh, bayberry bushes, high sand dunes, which in Ocean City, our beach is very wide, but flat. Over at Assateague, there are really tall dunes. And it's more of a natural, it's an undeveloped area, as you can imagine. So if you wanna take a picnic lunch and some refreshments with you. This is where the famous wild ponies roam. Folklore will tell you that they were came ashore off a, off a storm-tossed Spanish galleon and made their life there in the marshes. Uh, the other story is that farmers would take their livestock out to the outer marshes and fence it off so that they would not be taxed on that livestock in colonial days. So we don't know which one of those is right. However, this herd of horses is on the barrier island of Assateague it extends all the way down into Virginia, but there are actually two separate herds of horses. Virginia <laughs> manages theirs and Maryland manages, but Maryland manages. They will feed in the winter. They urge people to keep away from the horses because they want them to be in their natural environment. And it's very rare that you go there that you don't see a herd of horses. It's a real treat during my lifetime. I've been out there on the beach and turn around and here is an entire herd of horses walking down the beach as if they were just your regular beach going visitor as if they didn't even see you. Wow. And it's just amazing. They also have a wonderful visitor center out there. And of course, uh, the, the staff there is wonderful about informing folks about the environment and keeping the environment well, but it's, it's also a campground. Uh, people can camp out there. Motor coaches can go out there and tour. So it's, it's a not to be missed place. If you're coming to Ocean City, pretty much you're going to end up at Assateague at some point. Good, good. Um, you, can, can you talk a little bit about the fishing out there? How is it? Oh, well, we are the white marlin capital of the world. It's the, it's the highest, uh, I don't wanna say highest price, but the, the most award-winning money-wise uh, billfish tournament in the world. People come <laughs> from all over the world to participate in this. So. The White Marlin Tournament is, is what we're famous for, but we have boats that go out almost every day. Uh, there's a commercial fishing harbor here as well, but we have charter boats and head boats that go out. People just rent boats, they bring their boats. Um, there are canyons off in the Atlantic that are very deep and we are well known for fishing and even fishing in the back bay, which is pretty shallow in back of Ocean City um, on that side. and. Um, People have been coming here for many years, even just to fish off the bridge. We've got some piers right here in town where you can just uh, grab a pole or a crab line and, and go fishing, but we're very famous for that. Okay, very, very nice. So um, you talked about uh, fishing. I would imagine that um, you can uh, fish during the day and you could eat fresh seafood when you're done with your long day's journey. Um, can you describe some of the local dining scene there, maybe some of your favorite group places or you know, just overall, what's the, the dining vibe in the Ocean City area? 
Well, three of them come to mind, I guess, when you say groups. Uh, the Angler is an excellent place. It's right in that harbor marina area where you'll see boats, you know, getting ready for the day or coming back in, in with their catch. And the Angler loves groups. They have their own boat that, uh, you know, for instance, a group could dine uh, right harbor side and then go out in the evening on the boat that they have that gives a tour. They go out in the Atlantic if they can, but if it's a little rocky or something, they'll tool around in the back bay and take you over at the harbor and see some of the magnificent homes that have, have been erected on the on the waterfront. Um, and they do a great job of that. Harrison's Harbor Watch, right at the inlet, has the best view of Assateague Island and of all things incoming boat uh, in the waterway of the inlet. They do a wonderful meal for groups. Um, they always are totally prepared and give great choices. Um, and then there's Phillips, which the famous Phillips Seafood, which is actually an international seafood company now, but has locations in some of the surrounding cities that we talked about earlier. Bryce and Shirley Phillips actually, again, came from Dorchester County, not to belabor that, but I guess a lot of our local folks have come from other counties and ended up in Ocean City. Um, they started out with a little carry out of crabs, crab cakes, you know, things like that in Ocean City. Their first restaurant here is Phillips Crab House, which is um, actually right on 21st Street downtown. They do wonderful buffets. It, it's, it's an immense building uh, decorated in a Tiffany style. They do a wonderful job with groups, uh, very famous. And that's from that little shack started an international seafood brokerage, which exists today in Baltimore and many other places, as well as here in Ocean City. I had no idea. Sometimes some of their folks don't even. I Sometimes when we've been on, on sales trips, as you mentioned earlier, they didn't know that the one in Ocean City is the one that started it all. Okay. Cool, cool. So um, you yeah, lots of different options, fresh seafood, uh, different varieties and such, whether on the boardwalk or off. Um, can you, you, you bring out some of the different shopping options that are available? I know there's an outlet mall in the area. There's some great yeah. downtown shopping. Kind of walk us through what you guys have got available. Well, a lot of jewelry stores um, downtown on the boardwalk, as well as, you know, we've got the traditional t-shirt shops and souvenir places as well, but a lot of fine jewelry and, and some shopping there. We have the Ocean City Outlets. Um, which has any manner of the brand names and the, the famous designer names. And that's just about half a mile over the bridge, not very far at all, easily, very easily accessible. And um, we also always direct folks to Berlin, which is one of the coolest small towns in the United States. And they have that, that title to prove it. One of the best shopping places. They've done a wonderful job of retaining and maintaining their main street shopping area. It's just lovely. At Christmas time, not only is their downtown area decorated, but you hear music being put out on loudspeakers, Christmas music, their lanterns are decorated. A lot of shops from bakeries to brew pubs, you know, to the, the gastro pubs that are so famous now. Or if you like something more traditional, there's the Atlantic Hotel in Berlin, which is a very Victorian type place. You can sit on the front porch and have a drink or coffee and watch the small town vibe. With tour groups, often we just would take folks over there and say, please feel free to explore on your own for a couple hours, find a nice place for lunch, go in an art shop, a, a consignment place for antiques, a stationery or linen shop. I mean, all manner of the traditional small town merchants that we're so pleased to, to support. That's nice. The, the, the um, award you were referring to is Best Small Town for Shopping in 2020 by USA Today. So um, that's pretty prestigious. It is. That's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. So um, you, I, I love the kind of mixture between the touristy shops and the outlet and, you know, the great downtown shopping, so important to support local merchants these days. Um, I wanted to segue, you know, we've talked a, a lot of, you know, maybe many things about what adults would do coming through there. Um, what about some of the opportunities like STEAM opportunities for students? Um, you mentioned the convention center as well. So, you know, before we wrap up here, just, you know, talk about um, some of the um, things that maybe we haven't covered yet that would that would hit those two markets. 
Well, uh, the Discovery Center, as I said, is very educational, as is the lace saving station. So you have opportunities for education with that and Harriet Tubman, as we talked about. Um, we have a lot of groups in our convention center. They're both competitions and um, some of the newer types of conventions that we've had uh, recently, um, things with uh, the electronic side of things, the technical side of things, the digital side of things, all, all manners of, of meetings with those things. We have performance opportunities in Ocean City, some of the side streets, even our boardwalk, and we have a beautiful performing arts center right within our convention center. We do get a lot of student senior trips here, but we also do also, we can plan for the educational component of a student trip uh, and, and put some of these we have the fun of Ocean City, but we're certainly happy to arrange something where the learning opportunities for the environment, maybe even volunteering in some of the facilities that we've talked about when the students are in the area. Nice, nice. So um, before we, um, we finish off here, a festival is certainly a, a big part of what happens in a normal year. I don't know what 2020 held, obviously, in a lot of areas, festivals were either very muted or they were um, uh, just canceled altogether. Um, you guys have a couple of big events that go on during the year there. Yes, and you're right about 2020, but but plans are well underway for upcoming when, when things are a little safer and we're happy to welcome people back to our festivals at that point. The mainstays that we have every year are Spring Fest, Sun Fest, and Winter Fest. Those are our, our largest festivals. Uh, Spring Fest and Sun Fest are four days under big top tents in our inlet parking area with huge tents full of crafters, huge tents full of food vendors, and several stages of indoor and outdoor entertainment going on for four days in the spring. And then again, we do it in September, it, it usually at the end of September or sometimes running into October. And they are very popular with all kinds of groups as well as the individual travelers. Uh, Winterfest, which we seems like we've just wrapped up, is uh, the lighted displays up at our Northside Park uh, area that I mentioned earlier. Hundreds, thousands of twinkling lights, hundreds of displays. And curiously for this year, Usually there would be a one of our boardwalk trams running through that and you would ride through the displays. Well, this year they curtailed it to be a walking where you walk through with your friends and family and see the displays up close. And they have found that people enjoy that even more than they did the tram ride. So plans are underway next year for it to be a walking event. Hmm. But, it, it, you know, folks that are having trouble, difficulty, perhaps walking, it's not a really uh it's not an arduous task to walk through it and certainly wheelchairs and so forth can be accommodated so people have found that they actually like it better that way so their plans are for that and of course throughout the year we have fireworks very frequently we have Oktoberfest, which is the you know the fall themes pet parades just a really a lot going on here almost all the time all year long Nice, nice. Okay, well, we'll look forward to uh, certainly improving conditions in 21, um, reboot the festivals, get people out. I mean, it's certainly a great way to experience the destination and also kind of get the vibe of, of what makes that local destination tick. Um, so um, before we open this up to questions, and I'm you know, sure there'll be some, uh, just wanted to share your contact information. What's the best way for uh, folks to get a hold of you? Well, the, the simple way is our number, and I'll, I'll give you that plus some other. It's 410-289-2800, 289-2800. Um, our website is ococean.com, ococean.com. And the group travel tab is right up at the top. So folks can click on that, and they'll, there are many ways to get to me. My email is ndabrowski at ococean.com, but that's so long. I, I hesitate for people to have to follow that, but if you go to ococean.com, you'll find many ways to click and, and to, to reach me directly. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you again. A really informative presentation. I can't wait to uh, come and visit you in your hometown, um, not necessarily at a conference, but actually see you face-to-face -face in your hometown sometime very soon. That would be great, Jeff. We would be happy to have you. Norma, we've already got some really good questions in the chat room, so Great. Uh, let's uh, let's get started with that. 
Um, trying to get it open. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, the, the first one is uh, a little about the pandemic. And the question was, how has the pandemic affected visitation? And what do you project for the upcoming summer? Well, we actually enjoyed a very good summer last year. A lot of people chose to come to the beach to work. This fall, they've done it even to attend the remote schooling. And a lot of people used Ocean City as a getaway even during the pandemic. Though I must say our city government was very adamant about the use of masks and social distancing, physical distancing as we called it, even on the boardwalk. So we tried to keep everybody safe. We continue to move forward. But we were very busy last year, and we think that everyone will also appreciate the nature of our outdoor destination <laughs> this summer, and we think it'll be a, a pretty good summer for us. That's super. Um, question about your boardwalk tram. Um, we know that you have one. When does it run? Uh, is that year round or? Um, no, traditionally it's it'll start Memorial Day. Sometimes we run it during the Spring Fest Festival, which is in May typically. Um, certainly in general when it starts Memorial Day through Labor Day and sometimes for Sunfest. This year, because of the pandemic, it did not run, but plans are underway for the tram to be back this year. I haven't got an exact date, but we do feel it will be back online again this year. Um, kind of a follow up on the tram. Uh, it, it, there's more than one, isn't there? It's. Uh, oh, there's a fleet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When I was there, I remember they were all over. <laughs> um, the other question, and this uh, deals with uh, Berlin and shopping, I guess. Where would the coaches park? Is there uh, good good coach parking in Berlin for? Well, when I've accompanied coaches, they were able to park right in their municipal lot, which is like right beside you know where the downtown starts. I will say that is usually during the week, and there's usually space weekends. Okay. Um, we might have to call around and make some arrangement, but usually it's not too much of a problem right in their municipal lot. Okay, super. Um, another question that just came in was, uh, what is the availability of two, uh, one and two bedroom suites on the boardwalk? Mm -hmm. Your properties? There are a few properties, um, and I'd be glad to get back directly to the person. There's a few properties that do have that type of configuration. And of course, there are, thousands of rentable condos in Ocean City as well, where you'll have, you know, an entire living quarters for your group or your family. Cool. Um, I made a note to send you that question so you can get back to her. Um, the other thing, um, and this question that I have, um, I know before ABA Marketplace got, unfortunately, uh, went virtual, um, there was a very good pre-FAM on uh, the Underground Railroad on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Out of Ocean City, other than the Harriet Tubman Underground uh, Railroad Museum, are there other sites that are that you can visit kind of uh, looping out of Ocean City? Well, we mentioned the Radcliffe House, which is more okay. in the Colonial, um, and actually, not so much in Worcester County for that, but, um, and Rich Gilbert can chime in on this if he's able to, but all up and down the Eastern shore in Easton, Talbot County, there's Frederick Douglass, um, because I'm not sure if he was from there or that's where he spent a good deal of his life. There's quite a bit all up and down uh, the Maryland byways um, to do with Harriet Tubman and the, the whole African-American experience. Okay, awesome. Um, another question. Uh, is what when you get back to these folks with uh, follow ups, will you have a list of the rentables? Um, yes, and and I always recommend our our website is OC Ocean. It's got the okay. hotels, it's got condo rentals, it's got the realtors that rent condos, it's got places that listed. Um, for instance, the Harrison Group has um, the several hotels that have immense penthouses with multiple yeah. bedrooms and bathrooms. So if you have that type of retreat or even a family group, wedding group, whatever you may have, um, there's beautiful spaces in hotels like that. And I'd be happy to help anyone find what they're looking for. Right, well, that's pretty much uh, the rest of the questions that we had. 
And of course, you know, I wanted to share with everyone that our Friday fans will continue with Hudson, Hudson County, New Jersey. They're up next. They're going to be followed by St. Joseph, Missouri, visit Williamsburg. And we've got a few other great destinations that are already in the production site school. So watch your email for registration details. Now, if you've missed up any of our prior Friday fans, you can view them um, on the, our, our website in their entirety at leisuregrouptravel.com. And as I mentioned earlier, once we have this um, edited and uh, online, it will be able to, this uh, Friday fam will be able to be viewed on uh, online. Oh, one other question came in. Uh, okay. Well, Rich, I answered it. It was uh, our, uh, any other uh, on the boardwalk car rentals and uh, Rich responded, yes, condo rentals are available on the boardwalk, so. Yeah, for those um, that don't know, Rich Gilbert is our state of Maryland DMO. Yeah. And a wonderful, uh, champion of Ocean City for many, many years as well. So I always appreciate his input and he's a great resource for us as well. Well, I really, really appreciate uh, everyone who attended today. I know we ran a little over than the, the promised 30 minutes, but uh, I was memorized, mesmerized throughout the presentation. Um, I'm, I'm a beach person and I love Ocean City. I've been there a couple of times and uh, Every time I see somebody Facebook post something from Ocean City, I'm wishing I was there. So again, thank uh, everyone who attended. Thanks for the great questions. And Norma, thank you very, very much for your time. It is certainly appreciated. Thank well, you. thank you, Dave. It's, it's been a great experience uh, to, to speak with you prior to this broadcast and to Jeff. We really appreciate this opportunity. And thank you to everyone that took time today to take a look at Ocean City with us. Awesome. Take care, everyone.